So now I would like to invite Dr. Anisha to give her presentation on pain management with surface ablation. Uh, good afternoon all. Uh, so I'll be skipping the introductory part because most of, the, most of it has been covered by my co-instructors. So um, as we all know, PRK is uh, suitable in uh, thin, steep, and flat corneas where the LASIK surgery cannot be done. But what are the major drawbacks of the PRK procedure? These are, uh, the, they are severe pain, one, and then second one is the corneal haze. So if we uh, have to talk about the pain and its determinants, it is because of the exposure of nerve endings, the en enhanced spontaneous activity of injured nerve fibers, release of prostaglandins, and neuropeptides. So what are the current pain management that are available? So one is bandage contact lens. Uh, no active mechanism is involved. It just uh, prevents the exposure of the nerve endings. And one, the second one is the topical pharmacotherapy. And that also is, uh, it is accompanied by surface toxicity, subepithelial infiltrates, and keratitis if used on a longer period of time. And third is oral uh, uh, anti uh, uh, anti-analgesic, so that is basically, uh, in, you know, accompanied by systemic side effects, limited maximum daily dosage. So uh, the question arises whether we can uh, make this topical pharmacotherapy more safer. We have uh, published a study wherein we had used a bandage contact lens which was soaked in Ketorolac, 0.45% solution, to alleviate pain. We saw that uh, according to Wong Baker pain scale, we used a phases pain scale. Uh, when compared to the conventional BCL, the ketorolax soaked BCL actually improved the pain score. So it was it was around five to six roughly. But the question arises. But uh, the question arises is uh, what if what can we do more to decrease the pain that is induced by the PRK? So we have studied, uh, we have seen in the literature that the cold uh, has been used as a therapeutic agent in uh, preventing pain. Cryotherapy is widely used in sports medicine, as we all know, in the form of ice packs, gel packs, or ice towels. Our question was, can we use uh, cold as thermotherapy in the form of refrigerated bandage contact lens to reduce post-PRK pain? So we did a prospective randomized control trial. We included uh, 112 PRK eyes, 100 keratoconic eyes who underwent clinical, uh, routine clinical evaluation, routine imaging, followed by PRK procedure. They were randomized into two groups, conventional BCL groups and cold BCL groups. So the conventional BCL groups had BCL uh, blister packs stored at room temperature, that is 24 degrees Celsius, and cold BCL had blister packs stored at 4 degrees Celsius overnight in the refrigerator. One important thing to note is that uh, cold chain was maintained throughout. So overnight they used to be stored, and then uh, we used to take out the BCL only uh, prior to placing it on the patient's eyes so that the cold temperature is maintained. We did uh, PRK followed by cold BSS wash and then BCL assigned after randomization. Pain was recorded on uh, POD 1, 2, and 3. So we discovered a significant impact of cold, cold temperature on post-operative pain. There was reduced pain score when subjects received uh, cold BCL on one eye and uh, room temperature BCL on the contralateral eye. 80.4% uh, of subjects reported a re reduction in the pain score following cold BCL use. Although there were 19.6% report who reported either no difference in pain scores or increased pain following cold BCL as well. Uh, in those uh, cross-linking group as well, we saw that there was reduced pain score uh, in subjects receiving cold BCL. How does cold help in reducing pain was the next question. So we give, gave answers through the molecular pathway. Uh, so we know that there are transient receptor potential ion channels which are involved in uh, pain uh, pathway. So there is trip MA, trip V1, trip uh, uh, A1. So trip MA is the most important one. It's the molecular receptor for cooling, profound analgesia. It provides profound analgesia on activation. The other inflammatory genes that are involved in pain uh, pathway are uh, CGRP and interleukin-6. So what we did uh, was we collected the BCLs 
and uh, the B cells will have a uh, few cells and so we did micro centrifugation at 4 degrees Celsius and followed by RNA extraction. We did quantitative PCR analysis. We found that uh, there was no significant difference in these uh, 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 nociception associated factors in the two groups. But in, uh, interesting point to note was this trip M8, there was a, you know, a, a absolute and relative uh, increase in trip M8 uh, uh, expression in these cold BCLs. So what do we conclude from this is the reduced average pain scores in patients using cold BCL was uh, uh, validated by the molecular analysis of tripamate and in, uh, this tripamate is basically uh, involved in the analgesia that is associated with the cold BCL. So reduced average pain scores due to use of cold temperature, efficacy demonstrated at molecular level and this is a simple econ economical way. So no, no known adverse effects are associated with using the cold BCL. Uh, this is a, a flowchart which shows how uh, exactly the cold BCL tackles the pain. So cold BCL will uh, stimulate the A beta afferent nerve fibers. This in turn inhibits A delta nerve fibers and the C nerve fibers which are involved in the pain transmission. And it also reduces the nerve conduction velocity of the pain, uh, uh, pain pathway and also reduces the sensitivity to the pain receptors. It also reduces the release of the inflammatory factors from the injured tissue and thereby uh, gives us the, uh, you know, uh, less uh, reduction in the perception of the post-operative pain. So one thing we can do is this study didn't involve use of any, an, uh, uh, you know, analgesics uh, in the post-operative period. What we can do is we can use cold BCL, which will cause immediate dampening of influx of inflammatory mediators, followed by upregulation of cold sensitive receptors, followed by uh, administration of routine analgesics after POD1. This will give us superior response to medication as well. So this is a simple animation showing uh, that if you use conventional uh, bandage contact lens, you can see in the graph that there is a plateau. There's a peak pain uh, plateau uh, between 12 and uh, 48 hours of post-operative period. But if at all you use uh, cold BCL after this laser ablation, it will actually ward off the pain plateau in the post immediate post-operative period. I would conclude my talk by telling that cold BCL is a very economical way and uh, doesn't involve any side effects. Uh, along with uh, the routine analgesics that we use, cold BCL can come a long way. Thank you. So that was a really great presentation.